College football fans may remember Pat Dye as an intense coach pacing the sidelines back in the 80s. But today he's channeling his passion into a unique farm and hunting preserve not far from the Auburn University campus. Over his 12-year tenure with the Tigers, Dye amassed nearly 100 wins and four SEC championships. But since the coach hung up his whistle in 1991, He's been developing land with the same passion he used to develop high school boys into disciplined young men. You know, when I made the decision to get out of coaching, my decision was made based on uh, whether I could live without coaching or not. I wouldn't have got out of coaching if I had to go to, go to, go to golf course every day and play golf or, you know, travel or do something. I, I wanted to work and, and, uh, and be active and to, to make a difference. After spending some time in the cattle business, the coach bought an abandoned cattle farm and turned it into a picturesque garden and nursery where he raises Japanese maple trees. He says his interest in the trees developed right after he took the job at Auburn. My first contact with the Japanese maple was in 1981 when I came to Auburn and uh, we built a house and the landscape guy said, coach, you need a specialist specimen tree here in this part of the yard and I said what is a specimen tree? So he brought a multi-trunk green Japanese maple and I watched that tree grow and change colors three or four times a year for 12 years and just fell in love with the tree. Dye says he still drives by his old house several times a year to look at that first tree which is now 30 feet tall. Today he has about 7,000 Japanese maples planted on his farm or in pots at his nursery. Because the trees cross-pollinate, there are about 2,000 different varieties in all colors, shapes, and sizes. It's a tree for everybody and every kind of personality. If you want a big, strong, upright, you can get them. If you want something dainty and dwarf is not going to get too big, or you want to put something in a pot, or you want to make a bonsai, uh, and, and everything in between. And uh, so it's just a fascinating, fascinating tree. In addition to the thousands of Japanese maples he's put here, Coach Dye also planted other types of trees throughout his garden. Pines, poplar, cypress, and many other companion trees. He says tree planting is a job he doesn't ever expect to finish. The trees that I planted here in 99 are, are beautiful trees and, and lot, some of them have already gotten to be specimen trees. And I've planted some every year since then. And I hope that I can plant some the day I die. I won't be able to see them, but somebody will. Somebody will enjoy the beauty of that tree, whether it's, it leaves here and goes to somebody's yard, or whether it stays here in the landscape. When he's not tending to his prized garden, Coach Dye writes a column for an Auburn fan website, has several endorsement deals, and even 21 years after he left the world of coaching, is still a popular speaker around the country. But all of that's secondary to the life he's chosen for his retirement years. You know, I don't care about having lots of money. Uh, you know, I don't care about being rich or whatever. This farm, as long as I can maintain it and work on it every day, and take what the good Lord put here and, and try to make it better and look after what he put here, then, uh, then I'm happy. I got a good life. I don't, I don't, I, and I know it. Coach Dye calls this farm an expensive hobby, but it's also a business. Each year he sells Japanese maple trees to people all over the world. If you'd like to know more about Japanese maples or perhaps are interested in buying one, you can visit www.quailhollowgardens.com. Up next, we'll visit a farm that produces some of the top horses in Alabama. But this is not your typical equine operation.